Welcome to Oh My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. I will be covering the topic of the parables of the soils, the four soils, and also harvest. Because it is harvest season, the time of reaping of what you sowed. And also, some will also practice Halloween and go trick-or-treating. So, at this time, I will gather and pray with you during this harvest season and I pray that as you have sowed the good seed of, of good care and good resources into others that you will reap your harvest in return as Jesus said some reap some 60 and some 30 some hundredfold so may you get your return back what you sowed and if you are farmers out there that you have brought in a great harvest this season congratulations and also those who have been productive throughout the year as we close one fiscal year and enter another fiscal year they have their rewards and they also have their strains so god's grace be with you heavenly father we thank you we thank you lord god that the joy of the lord is our strength we thank you lord god for reviving us again for bringing joy to us again for bringing health and healing to us again and we thank you, Lord God, that your mercies are new every morning from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. In you we live, we move, and we have our being. So we thank you, Lord God, for we can do nothing without you. We thank you for keeping us and being a covenant keeper, a loving father, a gracious God. Amen and amen. And a Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew of the New Testament of Matthew chapter 13 it reads later that same day Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake a large crowd soon gathered around him so he got into a boat then he sat there and taught as people stood on the shore and I'm reading from the New Living Translation Bible and verse 3 it reads he told many stories in the form of parables such as this one listen a farmer went out to plant some seeds as he scattered them across his field some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock like pebbles the seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted. The plants wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil. And they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Jesus explains the parable of the four soils. Here it goes. His disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables? when you talk to the people okay those who are not the disciples he replied you who are my disciples you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven but others are not to those who listen to my teaching more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge but for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use these parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says when you hear what i say you will not understand 
When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and they, their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me, which is Shuv, and let me heal them. Because Jehovah Jireh, he's Rofa. He's the God who heals them. But he turned and said, and blessed his disciples, as blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see. But they didn't see it. And they longed to hear what you hear. But they didn't hear it from the lips of Jesus. And verse 18 of chapter 13 of the Gospel of Matthew or St. Matthew. And verse 18 it reads, Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. Here it is. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil, which is the pebbles, represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems. How many of us have problems? Or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. But all too quickly that message or the message is crowded out by the worries what are you worrying about it's choking you it's worried of this life and the lure of wealth so no fruit is produced the seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much had been planted. As they said with the American Express, what is in your wallet? What is in your heart that you are producing this harvest season that's producing 30, 60, a hundred fold of what has been planted? Is it good soil or is it soil that's choking you, that have you under arrest? Or is it on pebbles, a rocky soil, you receive it with joy, but you hear it and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden you don't have deep roots and it doesn't last. The joy of the Lord is your strength, my dear beloved. Or are you the seed that fell on the footpath on pathways that represents those who hear the message of the kingdom of God but you don't understand it so the evil one the trickery of our of adversary comes and deceive us and snatches away what we just got a good word of encouragement but it doesn't last because he quickly takes it from our hearts and snatches it away so Jesus tells the parable of the weeds in verse 24 of the Gospel of St. Matthew 13, verse 24. Here is another story Jesus told. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field, but that night as a worker slept, his enemy came 
and planted weeds among the wheat. Can you hear that? The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed. The farmer planted good seed in the, his field. And of course it was on good soil. But that night, the workers slept while his enemy, the adversary, came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. He rushed quickly and slipped away, doing something with deception. So that which is planted will not produce what it was intended to do. And it reads in verse 26, when the crop began to grow, it's producing, it's growing, and it produced grain, the weeds also grew because the adversary had planted. You didn't plant it there. Your adversary, your opponent planted there. So you got weeds growing among the wheat. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where we planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? I know it wasn't me, the farmer said, as of course I'm exaggerating in this text because the farmers grew weary and said, where did they come from? And then the reply, an enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. In verse 28, should we pull out the weeds, the farmer's workers said, should we do this and pull out the weeds? They asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. So don't touch it. So oftentimes when we see evil and good happening at the same token, we want to remove that which is good and plant that which is good among all the good stuff. But God said, let it grow. Let good grow with the that which is wicked. Let good and evil grow together. And God said, do not uproot it. That's in the words in red. As some people say, whatever's in red, those are Jesus' words. The farmer said, should we uproot it? Should we pull the weeds? They asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. You'll uproot that which was good, intended to do and have purpose if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. It's harvest season, y'all. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, and burn them, and put the wheat in the barn. Amen? Which is useful. Okay? Jesus tell the parable of the mustard seed. Here is another illustration Jesus said and used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field it is the smallest of all seeds. If you read in the biblical text of the Old Testament, you can be the smallest of your relatives, meaning not in height, but in influence of, of, of low pedigree. But Jesus said about this mustard seed, or you can say a mustard seed faith, a person who has a little mustard seed faith, it is the same as it is the smallest of the seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. It becomes the largest of garden plants and it grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. It abides there. It makes its dwelling there. It's habit, what do you call it? It's inhabitable, okay? So you can, live there amen it was not a what we call lodabar an empty place inhabitable but it was able to be habitable you can live there okay isn't that beautiful amen and may you have mustard seed faith as you have grown from faith to faith to glory to glory you may have started off with a little tiny mustard seed faith but you allowed your faith to continue to grow and grow and grow as you trusted 
and you have relied and you have put your confidence in God in Christ Jesus our Lord and it reads on Jesus tells the parable of the yeast Jesus also used this illustration the kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread even though she put only a little yeast and three measures of flour it permeated every part of the dough as people say it's un it's it was able to be touched in all places just by that a little amount amen everything you touch turns into gold that was the yeast that the woman placed into three measures of flour every part of the dough was touched by it okay and Jesus always used stories and illustrations like these when speaking to crowds. In fact, he never spoke to them without using such parables. This fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet. I will speak to you in parables. I will explain things hidden since the creation of the world. Jesus explains the parables of weeds. Then leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, please, Lord, as if he didn't explain this before. Here it is again. The disciples are going to, unto Jesus and asking, please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. You would think the disciples would be now educated because they was among Jesus and, and was able to get the inside knowledge or the secret things of God. Just as us ministers, we would you would think as ministers of God, we would have the secret things of God hidden from others that we are to be able to reveal God's word. Well, God can touch anyone and cause anyone's mind, hearts to make them and cause them to understand. If you would allow him to uh, allow him to touch your eyes, touch your ears, touch your heart and receive him as your Lord and Savior, he will open your eyes, beloved. He will open your hearts, beloved, and cause your ears to hear that you will be healed. And Jesus explains, he replied, The Son of Man, which is himself, is the farmer who plants the good seed. Christ in God, God in Christ Jesus, planting the good seed in our hearts. The field is the world. And the good seed represents the people of the kingdom of God, those who have acknowledged Christ as Lord. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one, the wicked one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil, the serpent. Okay? The harvest is the end of the world. The harvesters are the angels. The angel's job is to pull up and to bundle and throw into the fire the weeds. Okay? Or bring the wheat into God's barn. Okay? To save the good and to extract the wicked. Okay? Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Jesus tells the parable of the treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered, or you could say a woman discovered, Adam, humankind, hidden in a field in his or her excitement. He hid it again, sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Another parable. Jesus tells the parable of a pearl merchant. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout, okay, for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Isn't that like Christ Jesus? He gave up the throne of heaven to come down here as mortal flesh and live a, a life in human sinfulness, but yet without sin gave up everything for us bruised for our transgression chastised for our peace the punishment was upon him that brought us peace and with his stripes we have been healed and that's in isaiah love 
and beloved of Isaiah 61. This is what Christ done for you and for me. He said in Isaiah 61, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim the captives will be released, will be set free, and the prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. And he has shared this with us. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing, says the Lord. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Everyone will realize that they are a people the Lord has blessed. And that is of God to bless those who are weary that you do not grow weary in, in doing good. Do not be weary in doing good. For God will bless you and keep you in his truth and his righteousness and have compassion upon you and show you his mercy. So faint not. Let your heart not fail. Keep trusting. Keep believing in the Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. The beginning and the end. There is none like him in all the earth. In all the earth. In Isaiah 53, he said, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? He said, my servant grew up in the Lord's presence. This is prophet Isaiah of the Old Testament. Speaking of the Lord Messiah, Jesus Christ, who was to come, who is, and still to come. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in a dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance or substance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We torn our backs, we turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness Jesus carried. He carried us and it was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were punishment from God. A punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we can be healed. All of us, not some of us, not one of us, not two of us. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray or have strayed away. We have left God's path as we were talking about the soils of the different grounds. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly. Don't think what you are being treated, being treated harshly. Christ was treated even more severely. Yet he never said a word or a mumbling word, as some would say. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, we will have some silent years where we we'll mourn. And it's just between you and God. He did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. Even in the New Testament, it says, if you suffer with Christ, you will also be glorified with Christ. You will share in his glory as you share in his suffering. No one cared that he died without descendants. So he understands about those who 
pass away being childless, being empty, and having no earthly inheritance. He cares for you. God cares all about you. That his life was cut short in midstream. Remember Christ when we're thinking about Me Too movements, um, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, All Lives Matter. When we think of this, think of Christ. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. We may have deceived others, but Christ, he never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. And to cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, which was he took upon a sin of us all, and he will bring many descendants. He will enjoy long life. And Christ, God in Christ Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father even now waiting so his enemies, his adversary, the adversary become our footstool. It's the Lord's good plan that will make his plans prosper in his hands. With all power in his hands, he will accomplish this. And it says when he sees all this is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. So God be the glory. And it continues. And because of his experience, my righteous serv servant will will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. That's the outcasts. That's the Jews, the, the Gentiles, those of other faith groups, Muslims of all kinds who will come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. For many will be counted righteous. But he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Christ our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. It says some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And oftentimes some people trust in military might, but still trust. You must put your trust in the living God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And it reads in Matthew of the Gospel of Matthew 13 and 52. Then he added, Every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner or steward, a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems, new knowledge, new treasuries of truth, as well as old treasuries of truth, the good and old together. Just like how the good and evil have to work together and God has to be the one who can sort it out. Let God bring new treasure to you as well as the old gems to you. We need the elders, we need the youth, we need the millennials to grow together. And let this be God's offering to us to receive each other, to love each other as Christ loved us all and gave himself for our lives in our place. For of our sins, he gave us peace and given us everlasting joy. To God be all the glory. God bless you and peace be with you. Amen and amen.